A recent video I did showed me that there are a lot of unhappy RV owners out there. So I'm gonna shine a light on that and bring you some good news. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I'm a full-time RVer. I've been on the road almost five years and a recent video I did got a strong reaction. In fact, it got 200,000 views in four days. It was the one that I did a few weeks ago interviewing Bob and Louise. They bought a brand new grand design solitude fifth wheel. It had a major design flaw that affected the structure, the actual frame of the fifth wheel. If if you want to watch that video in case you didn't see it, I'll have a link for that right here. But I want to talk about the reaction that I got. I got a lot of people sharing stories of their own nightmares of buying a brand new trailer, fifth wheel, or even a motorhome and not being able to use it. Sample comment. I've had my new camper for 87 days and it has been in the shop for 87 days. So I want to share some of those comments with you, but I want to talk about the goal of this channel, which is also my goal in life, and that is to be a force of good. I really think with nearly a hundred thousand subscribers that we can create change in the RV industry by highlighting these stories and also highlighting the good. If you're shopping for an RV, it's going to be so helpful for you to know, stay away from this floor plan or even stay away from this manufacturer. Or hey, here's a manufacturer who stepped up to the plate and did something good. So I want to make more videos like this to help you when it comes to your buying decisions. I think quite honestly that the RV industry can do better. Now it's real that there are a lot of unhappy RV owners out there and it's real that there are a lot of happy RV owners out there. So this will be a great resource for you if we highlight both the good and the bad in the RV industry, and not just with the manufacturers, but also with dealers. The problem with the 390RK, which is what I interviewed Bob and Louise about, actually goes back to Lippert because they're the ones making the frame. Now, of course, they're probably getting the specs from Grand Design, but these frame failure issues could be all across the industry with many different manufacturers because most of the manufacturers that are coming out of Elkhart, Indiana, they're using Lippert. I've mentioned before that it's very good to have an inspection even on a brand new RV, but an inspection isn't going to catch everything. And in fact, in Bob and Louise's case, an inspection isn't going to find structural issues because an, an RV inspector isn't going to take the rig apart. Here's a story with a happy ending. Vince owns a 260 RD. This is a Grand Design Reflection fifth wheel. Now he wasn't the first owner and it was only a couple years old. There were some issues with the 260 RD with the slide wall bulging. Now, if you were the original owner, Grand Design would make that repair. They told him, well, since he's not the original owner, that warranty doesn't pass over, so you're out of luck. But they reconsidered and now they're making good on that and they're fixing Vince's 260 RD. And that's why I'm happy to pass on this information because that could help you. James, who's a member of the Patreon community, he bought a brand new Airstream. He warns to stay away from the Airstreams that have the C zone feature. This is a computer that controls pretty much everything on the Airstream. Well, his went bad. That meant he couldn't even use his air conditioning or his heat pump. Well, James is a full-time RVer. He ended up staying in a hotel for eight weeks. First, he had to go through waiting weeks for the warranty to be approved, but then getting this new CZ Zone module programmed was not an easy thing. It could only be programmed at the manufacturer, not the dealer. When it got to the dealer, he still couldn't get it right. Meanwhile, James is living in a hotel, not able to live his full-time RV life. He ended up selling his six-month-old Airstream. And it's not just owners of new travel trailers and fifth wheels. I'm hearing from motorhome owners. In fact, owners of motorhomes made by Newmar. Newmar is a very well-respected brand. In fact, have done three or four reviews of their floor plans. I love Newmar. 
But if there's a problem with them, then maybe something has changed, I wanna know, and I'm sure you do too. So somebody wrote that they purchased one in January of this year, January of 2023. They spent $500,000 on it and it's been nothing but problems. I've also heard from a couple other Numar owners where they weren't so happy. So let me know if you bought a Numar in the last couple years, let me know what your experience has been. I definitely wanna hear if there's a downhill trend or if things are still good over at Numar and that we can still trust them to build a good quality product. Another unhappy owner of a motorhome was an owner of a Omni motorhome made by Thor. They had a 2022 model. It had so many problems that the owner was like, I can't take it anymore. They ended up selling it for a big loss. The problems, of course, are not just with the RV manufacturing industry, but with the dealers. Connie writes about her problem with the dealer, and this is not unusual. She says they bought a brand new 2023 a few months ago. They had a problem with the water line to the water heater. It wasn't attached correctly but the dealer that they bought it from totally abandoned them. They are not returning their calls. They're not returning their emails. Bill says he purchased a 2022 Forest River. So many problems and he said it's hard to get a dealer to work on the problems if you didn't buy it from that dealer. That's how different the RV industry is from the car industry. If you buy a Toyota or Ford or whatever, you know that you can travel the country and you can find a Ford dealership, a Toyota dealership, and they'll take care of you. The RV industry definitely needs to make some changes because you will get priority from your home dealership. But if you go to another dealership, oftentimes they don't even wanna talk to you. So here's a good dealership. This is from Helen. We bought our Grand Design two years ago. We've had no problems. We've had a fantastic dealership experience at Harper Camperland, which is in Great Bend, Kansas. They also have their own campground while they do the repairs. It was amazing. Several people commented about lemon laws. We need lemon laws for RVs. Well, there are some, they vary from state to state, and some states are, have strong lemon laws for RVs, but overall, they are not as strong as they are for cars. I do think there's some room for improvement so that you have more protection when you buy a new RV. These are so much more expensive than cars typically anyway, so I think we need that protection go to the forum that matches the floor plan and make of what you're looking for. Find out first if there's any problems because that's where people are gonna talk about it. There's generally gonna be a Facebook page for that floor plan and manufacturer so you can say, hey, what's the good or the bad? What should I look for? I had heard good things about Alliance, but I've also been hearing some bad things about Alliance. We bought a 2023. This is from Sammy. They bought it last August, so it's been a year. We've had so many problems. They're too numerous to list. We took it to the dealership for repairs. The serviceman said, another COVID baby, and said there's been a record number of RVs needing repair. Four months later, they still don't have the parts. So they haven't been able to camp for four months. Darren purchased a brand new Riverstone. Now those are not cheap. They are nice looking campers. The list is unbelievable of what went wrong. In fact, that Riverstone has been at the dealer more than it's been in Darren's possession. Some people have said, well, the problems are because the rigs are too big. These are great big fifth wheels. Well, let me tell you, I'm also hearing from people who have small trailers. Andrew says, I bought a brand new Coleman camper. You know, those are small campers. It has a lot of issues, including air conditioning. It's a long list of things to repair for such a little camper. Here's some more happy news. John has a 2022 Keystone Camper. He used it all last fall and all up through this year. He hasn't had any problems and he's really grateful for what he says is a well-built camper. Oliver is another manufacturer I'm hearing good things about. I have somebody who wrote in and said they love theirs. It's well built. They're not cheap. They build trailers. They're only built in Tennessee and they, he says that they're hand built. He put 3,000 miles on his. No problems at all.
We know the RV industry totally exploded during COVID and maybe they dropped the ball on a lot of things. They were like, okay, there, there's a huge influx of buyers and we can't even build them fast enough. We'll just slap them together and get them out there. But now I think it's an opportunity for us to stand up and say, no, we need quality products. We need quality service. We need an, an RV manufacturer who's gonna stand behind their product. We need to get what we've paid for if we bought something new no matter what we paid 30,000 or 130,000 we need to get what we've paid for if you have a story good or bad please share it put it in the comments or email me by doing that you're going to be helping your fellow campers i definitely will be making more videos to shine a light on this and hopefully bring change to the rv industry if you've enjoyed this video please like subscribe and share and let me know how you feel about the RV industry? Is there any hope for them at all? And what changes do we need to make for the dealerships to have them step up and take care of everyone? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And as always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.